Kulavinaka and warm greetings to everyone watching this session. My name is Ranbir Singh. I am the Senior Manager of Public Relations and Communications at the Fiji National University, and I will be the moderator for this session. We are delighted to welcome all our viewers to the eighth and final session of the 2021 Fiji National University's Virtual Open Week. In this session, we will feature the Fiji Maritime Academy or FMA in short. I would like to welcome all our viewers in Fiji and from the region who are connected with us through either the FNU Facebook page, Zoom, or through the YouTube channel. I do hope you are all excited to hear about the wide range of programs offered by FNU's Fiji Maritime Academy. The theme of this year's Fiji National University Virtual Open Week is Your Future, Our Mission, which aligns perfectly with our role as a quality tertiary education provider. Students are at the heart of everything we do here at FNU, and we are here to guide each one of you on your tertiary education journey. We are ready to assist you to achieve your academic aspirations. This session, we will highlight the courses and programs offered by FMA. I encourage you to message us your questions so we can answer them and set you on the right path to success. Before we proceed further, I would like to remind everyone that we have some fantastic prizes to give away throughout this session. So stay tuned and participate in the quizzes to win these wonderful prizes. Please note, we also have a fitness pack to give away. To win, simply comment the name of your school. Be sure to also answer the quiz questions to boost your chances to win these wonderful prizes. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome the CEO of FMA, Mahesha, to deliver his address. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Ranbir. Um, and Good morning, everyone um, attending this Zoom session. I am, my name is Mahesa. Uh, I am uh, the CEO of Fiji Maritime Academy. So uh, it's the only uh, school we, we have a CEO. I'm also the director in charge. So uh, either name uh, can, can, can fit. Um, I will give you a brief overview of, uh, of the school and, and what we are all about. And then uh, I can I can transfer you to the, the different departments where the HODs will uh, introduce their uh, departments. I'll tell you why this is so because uh, Fiji Maritime Academy is is an institution that um, trains seafarers. So that means we train students uh, who want to go to sea. Again, going to sea means working on a ship. So. Um, when uh, when I say working on a ship, uh, there's a lot of usually a lot of confusion. What do you mean working on a ship? What do you do? Um, so uh, to work on a ship, uh, you need uh, certain skills, and um, really uh, unlike any other profession in, on a ship, you need two different skills. Uh, this may seem a little strange. So there's one person to navigate the ship or drive the ship, if you like. And, and um, another section or another department itself, uh, which uh, actually runs the engine or operates the engine, if you like. So the Fiji Maritime Academy also has that distinction. So there's a, there's a, there's a navigation department or what we call nautical science, and there's an engineering department, which uh, we learn to operate the engine. Going further, there's another element to it. We, when we are on the ship, we need to be safe. Uh, everybody needs uh, to know to survive at sea, uh, what to do in case of a fire or to attend um, patients uh, if they get sick. So there's another section where you, both these departments must have the skills. So those skills are, we, are, are about your safety and the ship safety and the survival of your, your time at sea. 
So in the academy, we, we have three uh, uh, different departments, which, which we, we do this. Um, and a lot of people um, who come to the academy are, are very much confused as to, you know, what, what, you know, who is a captain, who is, what, what is this engineering? Um, so even uh, if people who are not interested in, in maritime, but this is a good, good time maybe to, to understand uh, how a ship works. So you, um, you take a ship from A to B and then you need to know uh, where to go. So that's done with chart work, plotting charts. Also the, the, those officers also are involved in cargo loading, making the ship safe when, when it's loaded. So, so they, they are the skills you learn. So for a marine engineer, you, you learn a lot of things uh, about uh, running a big marine engine. So um, in, in, the, in that same token, there are two different career paths, if you like. Uh, you, can, uh, you can come in um, as a cadet or you can come in as an upgrading student. The difference is for a cadet, you need your, um, your minimum qualification requirements, which is physics, maths, and English. Uh, but if you don't have that, if you don't get that, you can actually go to C first and then come, come to the school. So there's, there's two different paths that you can take in, in the career. The, the, the different uh, departments will, will explain to, to you. Uh, the, the, other, the fourth department we have is Marine Simulator. So a lot of the, the practical work that uh, we are unable to do um, uh, within the academy, um, uh, we are like, you know, basically you can drive a ship on a, using a computer and uh, we have a marine simulator department, which will explain that part to you. So what do you learn? You learn a variety of things um, in the sense, but uh, I must tell you, if you all want to join Fiji Maritime Academy, other than your academic work, you need to be very disciplined you need to actually think about whether you want to go to sea and, and be disciplined um, uh, to, to achieve what you want to achieve. It, it takes time. So you go to sea, then you come back, you, you come to the academy, then you go to sea, you come back a few times. So this is a back and forth uh, sort of thing. So it takes a long time before you qualify. So this is why I say you need that, that interest and the discipline uh, if you want to join the academy. Uh, there are opportunities uh, in, in local ships. So we have a, a good local uh, shipping industry where a lot of our students join. And people who want to see the world, there's another opportunity where they can actually join foreign uh, vessels. Um, so uh, so there's, a, there's a lot of opportunity there to, to, to uh, either stay local, you know, if you have a family, you might think, yeah, I want to stay local, I'll just join the local ships. But if you're adventurous enough and you want to see the world, then you can go and uh, and the, the, uh, to the international ships. So eventually your, your ultimate goal is to be a ship captain or a chief engineer. So if you join the nautical science department, you will become a ship's captain after a, a while. Um, then uh, if you join the marine engine department, you can be the, the chief engineer. But in between there are ranks of officers that you go through. Uh, five, four. Uh, in in nautical in marine, we go from from uh, from higher to lower. So you don't go from one to five. So you go from five, four, three to one. So the last one is one. So the class one is is a is a master, and class one is an engineer. That's the uh, uh, short of it. And um, the different departments will explain to you. Their, their own, like I said, there's four departments there that will explain their own departments and how, how it works. And um, if you are interested to join, I very, very welcome you. Um, uh, so um, just uh, put your questions to me or, or to the, the heads of department and we can answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ruan. Thank you. Thank you, Mahesha, for your welcome address. Uh, before we welcome our first presenter, as I had mentioned earlier, please note we will be giving out some awesome prizes throughout this session. So please keep tuned and be sure to participate in the quiz competition. Also, you can tell us by commenting in the chat platforms from where you are watching this session, 
or simply mention the name of your school to go into the draw. Now I would like to share a quick fact. The programs offered at the Fiji Maritime Academy is internationally recognized. This means that any student graduating from FMA can follow pathways to gradually become a ship captain or a chief engineer. All you need is a FNU certificate and C time, which simply means the more time you spend working on ships, the higher your ranking will become. With those words, I would like to now welcome our first presenter, Captain Villivo, who is the head of department for nautical science. Thank you, Mr. Rambir. Uh, for information, uh, Captain Villivo is not uh, in and uh, I'll be standing in for him uh, this morning on the presenting the nautical science department. Uh, for information, uh, my name is Captain Tevita Rombanakandabu. I'm the head of the department for safety and survival, but I'll be presenting the nautical science department this morning. Uh, students, the nautical science department offers a program that complies with the STCW 1978 as amended. Programs facilitated by the department are Diploma in Nautical Science, Rating Courses, which includes Able Seafarer Deck, Deck Watch Rating, and Class 6 Master Engineer for Territorial Waters. These programs allow students to take up the career to become officer in the local or international merchant navy as deck officer or ship's captain or rating officers. Upon the completion of the academic qualification for diploma in nautical science program, students obtain certificate of competency from the Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji by going through oral examination conducted by MSEF. The same applies to rating courses. Nautical Science Department facilitates the teaching and the learning process, which includes classroom sessions, practical sessions, and visiting shipping industries during field trips for mainstream program. The Diploma in Nautical Science program covers the mandatory minimum requirements as set out in Regulation 2 Stroke 1, Section A 2 stroke 1 of the STCW 1978 convention as amended. It is based on the minimum knowledge requirement for certification of officer in charge of a navigational watch on ships over 500 gross tons. While students complete the academic and some practicals on semester basis at the Maritime Academy, a mandatory 18 months industrial attestment is required to complete the diploma offered at the FMA. Entry requirements is a pass in year 12, year 13, and maths, physics, and English. Those who do not have the MER can enter via upgrading programs which 36 months of sick time. The upgrading students must find ship and work for 36 months before they enter class five and continue to class four, class three until what's keep. The career prospects are as follows. Officer in the local and international merchant navy as a deck officer fourth officer, third officer, second officer, chief officer, and master. And the program duration is 36 months for full-time students and uh, five years for part-time, including your seat time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Captain Tevita, for stepping in for Captain Willibo.
I'm sure our students viewing this session will send us questions regarding the programs offered by the Department of Nautical Science. Before I welcome our next speaker, I would like to remind all our viewers that if you have any questions regarding study opportunities at FNU, particularly FMA, please feel free to send in your inquiries via the chat platform. Another quick fact about FMA is that the Academy is working closely with the World Wildlife Foundation or WWF to train and provide formal certification to a group of fishermen from South Korea. This training will help these fishermen to work better on ships and further progress in this field. Friends, our next speaker is from the Department of Marine Engineering. Let's welcome Sunia, the head of Department of Marine Engineering. Thank you, Anbil. My name is uh, Sunia Biolavaki. You guys heard me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. And um, okay. Before I even continue on the formalities that was uh, in the, that was arranged for us, I would just like to welcome to all in attendance, especially to the intended students. Those are that uncertain about marine engineering. Any of the seafaring courses pays good money, good enticement otherwise. We see a lot of places in the, at the same time. The course contents are very much similar to any engineering courses. In, when it comes into theory, science, practical courses, it's a part of it. So FMA facility for engineering is unique and together with other departments within FNU, I could say that we are very much compatible to about 75% of what New Zealand or Australia can offer when it comes into training. We do have a full mission engine room simulator that as part of the simulator department, we run our own simulator courses for the engineers, which we normally call, especially when we have to do the engine room management system. So in the Pacific region, we probably the, got the best that any of the Pacific region can offer. And that is one of the, the training that is needed or required before anyone can really go in to do their oral exam for final in their certification, especially in the class three where they can go in and become chief engineer on some of the local vessels. That's a little introduction that I would like to add on to what uh, had been said. Otherwise, the program is the Diploma in Marine Engineering program covers the mandatory re minimum requirements as set out in the regulations. Uh, three forwards uh, slash one section A, there's three forward slash one of STCW 78 convention as amended. This is the regulations which the Maritime Safety, uh, Safety Authority of Fiji bases their assessments on the qualification and the training that we conduct in, this, in the academy. It is based on the minimum knowledge required for certification for officer in charge of an engineering watch on ships over 1500 kilowatts to 3,000 kilowatts while students complete the, acad the academic and some practical on a semester basis at the Maritime Academy, a mandatory six months industrial attachment is required to complete the diploma offered by the Fiji National University. Okay, this is, I'm talking about the diploma. We're not talking about the COC. Okay, COC is another thing, which is a requirement from Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji. So entry requirements for diploma in marine engineering is a past year 12, 13, well, you can see because it's an MER, if you got physics, maths, and English in year 12, that's okay. That is the, the minimum. Okay. Year 12, year 13 is a bonus. Also, sometimes some of uh, the students that come in, they don't have physics or related subjects that is required from year 12. So instead, they come in on year 13, which is okay. And that's obviously the reasons why you have both, uh, or it's duplicated in there. Those who do not have the MER can enter via the upgrading programs, as Captain Tess said, with 36 months sea time. The upgrading students must find a ship and work to 36 months before they enter class five and continue class four. Just remember, class five, 
before you progress into class four, you must also go back and do C service. So you can serve as a class five engineer before you gives you the prerequisite to come back into class four and so on and so forth. Class four from class four to class three and so on. The possible career paths for diploma marine engineering are as follows. Marine engineering, fifth engineer, fourth engineer, third engineer, second engineer, chief engineer. Rating in the local or international merchant navy as an engine room rating. Durations of courses, two and, two and a half years, full time, five years, part time, including C time. Terms is normally in semesters. And at the moment, you find that we are actually on virtual, which means that we are no longer in face to face, but we are starting to learn how to use the blended learning, both face to face and online. And I know we are getting there successfully. And uh, our examination officer, which is for the COC from Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji is also a student Penaya, who's the senior examiner in Fiji, uh, in Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji. Thank you very much. And once again, Bula. Mwade. Thank you, Master Shani, <laughs> presentation. I'm sure students viewing this live session will apply to your department in the future. Students, please, Keep your questions coming in through the chat platform and our team of academics will attend to them promptly. Friends, as you may have witnessed, there are many international vessels that visit Fiji regularly. What did you know that it is the local ship captains who pilot these vessels into the harbor? Can you imagine yourself piloting a five-story international vessel into a Fijian port. If you do, then you should join the Fiji Maritime Academy. To find out more about these programs, please visit the FNU website, www.fnu.ac.fj. The email address again, www.fnu.ac.fj. Now I would like to welcome our next speaker, Captain William, who is the head of department, Marine Simulator. Bula, and uh, greetings to you all. Uh, my name is Captain William McKay, and I'm from the Hidden Paradise. I currently uh, head the simulator department which uh, is a very recent department that was developed uh, in the Fiji Maritime Academy. Uh, the reasons being that uh, technology is uh, very quickly pacing the maritime industry and the needs to train our seafarers on uh, recent technologies available on uh, vessels and being used on foreign going vessels nowadays have advanced uh, tremendously over the last 10 years. Uh, most of our training is based on those candidates who are uh, preparing to uh, apply for a certificate of competency with the Fiji Maritime, uh, Maritime and Safety Authority. And uh, prerequisite mandatory uh, requirements uh, are prepared by the simulated department to their candidates. Uh, so we do training in... Uh, watch keeping on uh, bridge simulation, uh, egg disk training on electronic chart display information systems, and uh, global maritime distress and safety services, uh, radio operator training. So these are the primary short courses being offered by the marine simulation department. In addition to that, we also do uh, uh, classroom training for main courses from uh, the first stage year students to the uh, final year students, and they have an opportunity to come into the bridge simulators and carry out watch keeping uh, training uh, responsibilities and uh, to familiarize with the, themselves with the latest technologies available on uh, ships uh, today. Uh, unlike in the past, uh, where technology was very basic uh, on board, uh, now, almost uh, every aspect of uh, shipboard operation uh, from support 
to uh, operational and management levels on board vessels uh, equipped with uh, some type of technology that we have to uh, uh, get used to uh, working with and familiarize ourselves with it. Uh, if there's uh, any other queries that you require, please do not hesitate to uh, contact our academy, our administration office, or visit the website uh, or pay us a visit when the COVID-19 uh, lockdown is open to everybody. So you can uh, have a look at uh, what uh, we have at the simulator department uh, for training. Thank you. Thank you, Captain William, for your presentation. I'm sure a lot of students listening uh, today will contact your department to find out more about the study opportunities that are available. Friends at FNU, our study programs are a mix of theory and practical sessions. Our students participate in mandatory sea time, which provides them with an opportunity to put their skills and knowledge into practice. And I'm pleased to inform you that many FNU students are currently serving sea time in local and international shipping companies and are also getting ready to graduate thereafter. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce once again, Captain Devita, the head of Department for Safety and Survival. Devita is on mute still. I'm sorry. No worries. Students, the Safety and Survival Department offers short courses, which are normally three to five days courses. All safety and survival short courses are designed as per the IMO model courses, and they comply with the STCW 1978 as amended. Safety and survival short courses comprises of pre-sea training, which includes the four basic short courses mandatory for all seafarers in order to get on board a vessel and sail. Advanced safety training courses, security courses, IMDG and tanker courses, small craft operations, which the boatmaster course that enables any small boat owners to obtain license from MSEF to operate small crafts. Fiji Navy, the St. John Ambulance, having MOA with Fiji Maritime Academy, assist the safety and survival department in facilitating the firefighting sort of courses and the first aid and medical care short courses. This department also offers maritime fisheries program, which comprises of deckhand fishing and offshore fisheries skipper, which is a semester-based program. And this program and courses comply with the STCW 1995. There are 29 programs offered under the Safety, Survival, and Fisheries Department and as follows. Basic safety training, proficiency in fire prevention and firefighting, proficiency in fire prevention and firefighting, proficiency in personal survival technique, proficiency in elementary first aid, Proficiency in personal safety and social responsibilities. Proficiency in advanced firefighting. Proficiency in survival craft and rescue boat other than fast rescue boat. Proficiency in medical first aid. Refresher course for basic safety training. Refresher course for advanced safety training. Proficiency in security awareness. Proficiency in the seafarers designated security duties. Proficiency in ship security officers course. 
proficiency in port facility security officers course, board master, classic master engineer full, crowd management, handling dangerous goods in ports, basic sea safety, deck and fishing, offshore fishing skipper, basic oil and chemical tanker, able seafarer engine, engine watch rating, able seafarer deck, and deck watch rating. Before concluding, I want you to keep in mind that knowledge is power. And once you have it, it will stay with you for the rest of your life. Education can begin at any age, whether early childhood or after retirement. It has no limit, no deadline for starting or finishing. Even if you start late, it will not prevent you from being the best and competing with the rest of the world. Please visit our college website, www.fnu.ac.fj for more information on our program. And I look forward to meeting you on one of our campuses soon. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Tevita, for your presentation. So uh, students, participants uh, joining us on the different platforms, you have heard about the programs that are being offered at FMA. Now, some of you may be interested to know more about the applications process. To take us through this process step-by-step, step, we will now be joined by Avikesh from the academic office. Avikesh, you are mute. Uh, sorry for that. So I'll just explain the process again. So the students uh, need to log into our FNU website and then we'll select student and then we'll select the academic services. From here, we'll click on apply here. <clears throat> and then we will click on apply online. Okay, once on this page, we will click on create account.
Avikesh, are you still there? I think there's some technical difficulties. Uh, we'll get Avikesh back uh, as soon as uh, he's able to join us. Um, so we'll we'll uh, continue on with, with the program. Um, I know a lot of students have uh, joined us, uh, our viewers, uh, anxious about the quiz competition that uh, I had uh, announced earlier. Um, so we'll uh, try and uh, ask a few questions and uh, see if you guys have been paying attention. So uh, we'll allow uh, a minute or so uh, for each of the questions. Yeah, we have a couple of questions. The first question is, what does FMA stand for? Please send in your answers through, your, uh, through the chat box or Facebook page. What does FMA stand for? You yeah, can see some people are sending in their answers on Facebook. Thank you. The question again, what does FMA stand for? We'll give a minute for everyone to send in their answers. Note we have some awesome prizes to give away. What does FMA stand for? Thank you. So we'll move on to the uh, second question. The second question is, where is the FMA campus located? Where is the FMA campus located? Where is the FMA campus located? Thank you for all those sending in your answers. Where is FMA campus located? The third question is, how many departments are there at FMA? The question once again, how many departments are there at FMA? We'll give one minute or so for people to send in their answers. How many departments are there at FMA? So the fourth question is, what year in high school do you have to successfully complete to get a place at FMA? The question once again, what year in high school do you have to successfully complete to get a place at FMA? What year in high school do you have to successfully complete to get a place at FMA? You can see some uh, answers coming in. Aquila, 
Nilesh saying year 13. Is some um, saying year 12. In what year, what year in high school do you have to successfully complete to get a place in FMA? J says from six pass. What year in high school do you have to successfully complete to get a place at FMA? Okay, we'll move on to the fifth question. If students are not able to successfully complete year 12, can they complete the required C time practical to get a place at FMA. The question again, if students are not able to successfully complete year 12, can they complete the required C time practical to get a place at FMA? This is a yes or no question. Please send in your answers. If students are not able to successfully complete year 12? Can they complete the required C time practical to get a place at FMA? A lot of responses coming in. Okay, we'll move on to the sixth question. Are the diploma programs offered by FMA supported by the tertiary scholarships and loans service? The question again, are the diploma programs offered by FMA supported by the tertiary scholarships and loans service? Are the diploma programs offered by FMA supported by the tertiary scholarships and loans service? Tertiary scholarships and loans service, previously known as TSLB. Are the diploma programs offered by FMA supported by the tertiary scholarships and loans scheme. Okay, answers coming in. We'll move on. The seventh question, do graduates get to travel around the world while working on international ships? Do graduates, that's from FMA, do FMA graduates get to travel around the world while working on international ships? The question once again, do FMA graduates get to travel around the world while working on international ships? Thank you. So um, thank you for everyone who participated in this uh, quiz exercise and competition. Please note uh, the names of all winners will be posted on our social media pages later this evening. So just keep a lookout at the FNU Facebook page. There, is a, um, there will be a flyer posted up later this evening with the names of all the winners. Also, 
you will uh, get to know what you have won. Okay, uh, friends, uh, I will, uh, I believe Avi from the academic office has managed to rejoin us. So we'll just allow him to take us through the applications process. So all students uh, will be able to familiarize themselves uh, with how they can uh, lodge their applications with FNU successfully. So over to you, Avi. Good. Hello, everyone. Um, I will be uh, showing a demo of how the application uh, can be done through our website, the online application. Okay, we once the student uh, logs into our website, uh, they will select a student, and then. From over here, they will select academic services and then apply here. So, from over here, apply online. Okay, once on this page, the student will be required to create an account. So I'll click on create account and then enter the information. The email. And the phone contact. Okay, once done, you'll select the academic level, you'll select undergraduate, and then team applying for 2022 semester one. Uh, we'll enter the password. Okay, and then we'll click on create account. Okay, so once over here, uh, just put a different email. And then create account. Okay, over here, um, we'll enter the fields which are marked with red asterisk. 
So program level, we will select uh, obtain bachelor's degree. College will just take first type. Uh, if, uh, uh, if it is a new student, then we'll select new first time student. Campus, we'll just select direct campus. Course, if you're a full-time, then you'll select full-time. If you're a part-time student, then part-time. So I'll just select full-time student. Uh, program, I'll just take Bachelor of Engineering. Choice, it will be a first choice. So you select one. And then save and continue. Okay, over here, we'll select the ethnicity. So take uh, this one and the residential address. We just take to call country, I'll select Fiji. And then it, it requires the zip code. If it is unknown, then we'll just put NA. Okay, and then we'll save and continue. Okay, it requires your residential status. So if you are currently living in Fiji, we'll select yes. And then citizen, and then we'll enter the TIN number. And just put a dummy number. Um, agenda, we'll select male, date of birth. Uh, place of birth, just take uh, country of birth, take Fiji. And the birth uh, certificate registration number, uh, this will be in our birth certificate. Okay, if uh, there's any disability or the, if there's any special need for the child, then we'll select yes. Or if there's any medical condition or major illness, and then we'll select the yes for this option. Once done, we'll save and continue. Okay, uh, on this page, we'll require to uh, fill the emergency contact. So uh, we just uh, interrupt, uh, you can see your screen. Can you just check again? Thank you. Okay, on this uh, emergency uh, contact page will uh, require the a name of the person whom the university will contact in case of any emergency. So just a feel a relationship, just take mother, and the phone contact. And then we'll save and continue. Okay, over here we will uh, uh, fill the secondary school qualification uh, information. If uh, you've attended that uh, test institute, then we'll fill it over here. And then after that, we'll save and continue. If the application requires the job experience letter from the employer or any job experience uh, details, then we'll fill it over here and then we'll save and continue. Okay, the last part is the declaration part. Here we'll declare that all information uh, provided is uh, correct. So we'll just put yes. And then the next part is the child protection policy. Uh, it will declare that you have uh, understood the uh, child protection policy and then uh, you will abide by it. So we'll put yes, then we 
this over here. And then your signature, you can type your name as your signature. And then the next option is uh, uh, preview before submission. We click on this. Okay. So before submitting, we will just check once. If all information is correct, and then we will click on uh, submit and proceed to next step. Okay. Now you can see the application we have just created. It comes in our account, but the status says that action is required. So we'll click on view. And then we'll upload the required documents such as birth certificate, the a passport size photo, a TIN or join card, the secondary or uh, the tertiary institute results. If, they need, if there's any medical condition, then we'll upload the medical certificate, the letter from the employer. Once uh, everything is uploaded, then we'll uh, click on submit. Okay, that's all from my side. So if there's any query, uh, you can always uh, email us on admission at fnu.ac.fj or inquiry.academic at fnu.ac.fj. Thank you. Thank you, Avi, for your presentation. Uh, students, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask um, regarding applications. Uh, the email address admission at fnu.ac.fj. And if you have uh, any other questions, uh, you can drop us uh, a question on our chat box and uh, we will get that uh, answered uh, promptly. Uh, following that, uh, if you have any uh, other information, or do you seek any other information or um, need uh, inquiries made at FMA, please, you can uh, email us directly to the EO, the executive officer. So the email address is eofma at fnu.ac.fj. That email address, once again, eofma at fnu.ac.fj. Or you can uh, call as well. The phone number is 241779. The phone number again, Two four one triple seven nine. So feel free to either call or send us an email directly to the executive officer EOFMA at fnu.ac.fj. Um, Randy, just one yes. minute, Randy. Isn't that EO hyphen? I think it's EO hyphen. Is it, okay. Is there Thank a hyphen you. there? EO, yes. EO hyphen, right? EO hyphen FMA at FNU.ac.fj. Sorry for that. So the email address once again, EO hyphen FMA.ac.fj. Uh, we have some questions uh, that are here, uh, CEO and colleagues, uh, that uh, I'll. Uh, put now to the floor and uh, have you guys uh, uh, answer them. Uh, firstly is, uh, the question is uh, related to physics. Is physics a compulsory component uh, in uh, the uh, study opportunity uh, programs that we offer at FMA? Is physics compulsory? Uh, I'll, I'll put it this way, Rambira, you can, uh, it, the other HODs will also have an input. Uh, physics, uh, it is, it's a good, good skill to have physics. If you have physics, it'll help you through the career. If you don't have physics, uh, you will struggle with some other, uh, some other uh, subjects or some of the subject matter. So in the past, we have considered um, physics, but we have always advised uh, them to do a foundation course before they, they come in. There are people who have gone through the course without physics, uh, but that means they have to do extra hard work 
outside school to get those uh, get those technical knowledge so uh, the short answer is we prefer uh, to have uh, people to have physics uh, then the next option is they can do a foundation course if they do come in and actually do the course uh, that means they have to work extra hard uh, and and learn uh, physics outside uh, our curriculum because we don't teach physics in school it is something that they should have the knowledge physics maths and english is is a, is a knowledge they should have if they don't have that that means they have to do extra work at home uh, other hods can can uh, input into this because this is a general question i think it's um, most people ask this um, yeah i like to hear from the other um, the hod especially engineering and um uh, mr rambir yeah captain tevita yes sir. okay uh, we have two career paths eh? one right. is uh, specially designed for school leavers that met the requirement, the FNU requirement, form six pass maths, physics, and English. And there is another career path approved by the administration, MSEF. So the other career path, this is for the Fiji uh, Maritime Safety Administration. Eh? Uh, there is no academic uh, qualification for uh, prerequisite. Prerequisite is just age 17 and beyond. You can enter the maritime with another career path. But the difference is the duration of the course. For cadets, 36 months, those who met the requirement. For the upgrading, to get into the watchkeeper level, you have to do uh, four years, two months, or 50 months altogether. You will come to that level. So that is if you do not have the prerequisite math, uh, physics. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Tibita. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to? Yeah. Thank you, Ranbir. I as a head of engineering, the, I find even just a recent assignment that I, I set out, I could see the weakness in the calculations that these people do anyway. This is why physics is very important. The components in the thing that is lacking, we have the mechanics, the thermodynamics, the electro technology, and then you also have the naval architect. Okay, these are calculation courses. If you come in with the physics, background, you'll just, I mean, you, you go, you sweep through easily. But if you come in with a, uh, with no physics background or very weak physics background, as uh, CEO said, it's a good tool. But I can assure you, these guys who, who did not, and I know that they were suffering in the calculation part of it, in the last, uh, in fact, was due last week, the assi uh, assignment, and majority of them that came in late, they submitted late, say about on, after nine hours, late submission. One of their biggest problem was the calculation part. And I said, I'll, con I'll consider, but they were also sketch and describe type. I said, I'll consider the sketch and describe type. I'll send you the revision on the thing as your calculation part, because I know there is a shortfall in it anyway. Especially those ones who come in through the upgrading Courses. Those who come in through the cadetship program meeting the science requirement, which is basically the physics and uh, maths. See, physics and maths is, uh, in our course is actually been merged anyway. Physics, which includes thermodynamics, mechanics, and then maths. Okay, so these guys, they go through it with no problem at all. Okay, and this is why it is important that that MER is met for those who come in on a cadet program. If you come in on upgrading, that's another uh, issue altogether. Okay. So it's, I believe the standard has to be set so that we can maintain you know, graduates that are prepared for further studies anyway. 
At the moment, we are not. We haven't access into doing class two and class one, and even then, right? We're just doing the diploma level, which is not really the management level, and yet we're struggling with the calculation part. As I said earlier, calculation is involved in what we call the thermodynamics, mechanics, electrotechnology, and uh, naval architecture. And in a little bit is done in uh, electronics as well anyway. Okay. These are some of the components that we teach or the courses that we teach. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Um, Captain William, would you want to uh, also comment uh, on uh, yes, uh, the importance uh, of physics? Uh, thank you. Uh, for deck officers, the calculations involving ship stability is very critical, involving the moving of weights and weight calculations to keep the vessel afloat uh, during operations. Uh, moving of liquids and solid wastes are, uh, on board the vessel. Uh, the calculations involving physics, uh, they can be quite complex. So those uh, students uh, coming in with uh, knowledge of physics and uh, have a good uh, grasp on their physics will understand better and be able to match those calculations to uh, uh, whatever is uh, required for them to, to know. Uh, without a physics background, uh, it could become uh, quite complicated for them and they will be like uh, Sunia and uh, Captain Tevita had mentioned earlier, it could be quite uh, complex and complicated for them. And like uh, CEO had said, it would be better if they had uh, uh, the, the skills, they could uh, uh, grasp some knowledge on their on physics before attending uh, or uh, enrolling for Fiji Maritime Academy. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Captain William. Uh, also, there's uh, a, a question and a general one um, that I'll throw. Um, it's regarding uh, women in maritime. So there's a push to get more women in maritime. Uh, I know CEO is passionate about promoting this, and so is FMA and FNU. Uh, CEO, you, you want to uh, comment on the opportunities available for women in maritime? industry. Thank you. I think you are mute, uh, Gio. One minute. Yeah. Thank you, Ranbir. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll answer that question and, and for everyone. Uh, so this Women in Maritime was a, was a IMO, International Maritime Organization team. 2018, they, they came up with this and uh, so to give a little bit background is this that, you know, you know it's, it's been a, a, a male dominated industry for a long time and you know, only it was accepted that only men go to sea. Um, so as, as time goes along and, and as, um, as vessels spend time at sea, um, they have encouraged uh, females to join the ship. It, it, it brings a gender balance to the, the whole industry instead of having just all men for a long time at sea. So they have um, uh, successfully tried this in other countries. There are uh, a few uh, female captains now in, in, in Europe and in, even in India. So we have brought this to, um, to Fiji uh, and uh, we have encouraged uh, female to, females to join. And there has been, um, over, the, over the years we started, I think in uh, 2014, there was one or two. And then uh, last year there was more than 12 uh, it has it has grown a lot. Um, so recent times, uh, we have four female cadets joining international ships, um, and there's abundant. There's a lot of female cadets in in local ships as well. Now uh, to go further, a little bit further, it is challenging for the females, um, but uh, I find that uh, the female cadets do very well. Uh, they try to compete with the with the boys. Uh, therefore, uh, um, they they tend to do a little bit more academically. Um, uh, so, uh, in that sense, um, there's a international shipping companies have more vacancies now for for female cadets who are successful. Uh, but again, I, I go back to the fact that my introduction, uh, they need to be very disciplined uh, if they want to join the sea. The rewards are there. 
but the, there are certain sacrifices you have to make. Uh, but it's a good career for females. I mean, encourage all females to join um, the Maritime Academy. Thank you. Thank you, uh, CEO. Uh, just another point that uh, I, I'd like you to also elaborate on. When, when you talk about discipline, uh, can you just take us through to um, the type of students we try to groom at FMA because it's really important that our graduates, once they leave, they 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 carrying that flag, FMA, FNU flag. So can you uh, talk more about the, the discipline aspect of uh, of students? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ranveer. I, I always say we, you know, yeah, we we do uh, we teach academic training. We we teach all this uh, physics, maths, and whatever we can. But discipline is something uh, is questionable whether you can teach or not. Whether you you have it in you even before you come to the academy. Now a lot of the discipline uh, or, or the attitude that they bring are from where they come from, where the school. Um, uh, mostly, and then um, when they come to the academy, they find that the academy, they have to do, uh, I mean, basically two things. They have to come in time. I mean, we don't want to go further than that. Uh, coming in time and being well-dressed. So we have a dress code at the academy. So uh, everybody needs to be groomed, shaved, uh, uh, you know, dressed. Uh, we have a uniform, uh, wear the uniform, and... Uh, you know, the basics of, of, uh, of arriving in time, uh, we have to actually teach them. So, so uh, unlike any, any college or university, you can't turn up to Fiji Maritime Academy at any time you like and any way you like. Uh, so you have to dress and you have to come in time. So these are the two basic things. And then uh, be a seafarer, uh, everyone. You need, you need to have a good attitude. You need to have a good discipline. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if you are, are late to a ship, the ship will sail. The ship is not going to wait for you. Um, any other job or any other work that you go, the office block is there, office building is there. If you get late five minutes or 10 minutes, uh, you can still start work. But it, in, in shipping, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's unforgiven. Um, the ship will leave, leave you behind, whether you're in a foreign port or whether you're in Sioux Harbor. So if you can't arrive in time to the ship, or if you can't arrive in time to the academy, uh, then you know don't don't bother to come and even enroll because you will carry that to the career and then uh, you can't do it. So that that is uh, that is a very basic things we ask for uh, when you come to the academy. Uh, of course, the rest of it, uh, you know, things like using mobile phones. Um, uh, just horseplay around the, the campus. All this is not allowed. We run a, uh, if you call a semi-military academy, it's not a military academy, but we, we the discipline there is, is sort of semi-military. Um, so um, the students who come there to enroll must be prepared for this. Uh, this is what the message I want to give them today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, CEO. Uh, Captain William, uh, Captain Tevita, you, you want to elaborate on uh, given your experience uh, in the maritime industry and uh, any words of uh, wisdom you want to share with our participants? Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, just uh, elaborating on uh, what uh, CEO was uh, trying to say was uh, shipboard work involves a lot of routine also. And uh, officers, uh, there are no, uh, no replacements for an officer who cannot do his uh, responsibility. Another officer will have to step in and that will double the uh, workload for any officer on board. And therefore the self-discipline is important because when it's time for duty, you need to show up. You know, and then you break off and another officer shows up. And if this is affected, this routine, it affects the whole structure in uh, working operation of the vessel. Since every officer has his assigned responsibility. We may have so many crew that may step in to do what the crew members have been assigned to do, but with uh, officers, uh, there's only one officer for each uh, category of responsibility. 
And that's why uh, we uh, are very uh, particular about the discipline of our students when they come to maritime school. And uh, like uh, CEO said, if uh, you do not turn up to the ship when it's ready to sail, the ship will sail without you. Then you become an illegal in the host country and they very quickly try to get you out because then it becomes a stain on that company's reputation. Okay, so for each candidate that goes on a foreign going vessel from Fiji, he sort of flies the Fiji flag. Because most vessels now, they carry multinational crew. So it's not uncommon that you join a cargo ship with 20 crew and there are 11 different nationalities on board. Okay, so everyone identifies with his nationality, even though they are working as a team. Thank you. Um, maybe for the students, uh, yes. just uh, would you be able to uh, share some experience uh, when you were working on, on uh, international vessels or uh, something that the students, if they come to FMA, if they, once they graduate, what they can look forward to as far as uh, work experience, uh, exposure, international exposure and all that. Maybe uh, Captain William, you, you start and then we can go around the room. Okay, for me personally, I started my career in the maritime industry in 1985. I started as a deck apprentice locally with the Fiji Marine Department. After four years, I started sailing on foreign going on international vessels belong, belonging to German companies. Asian companies, uh, all international companies. Now, during this time, I've visited a lot of countries, very interesting. The work also was quite interesting, uh, being assigned responsibilities. And it is how you perform on these responsibilities that you are eventually promoted on board vessels. Now, yes, it is true. You get to visit a lot, a lot of countries uh, in this career, a lot of different countries that you may never thought that you would visit in your lifetime. But the greater thing about it is while you are visiting these countries, you are also getting well paid for it. So uh, it, it sort of works well together. The only probably disadvantage is you spend a long time away from your loved ones at home. Eh? But it is a sacrifice that I found has been worthwhile. I've spent about 30 years uh, working uh, international waters and also on the local scene. And uh, now I'm in the school and closer to my family. But at that time, uh, the, being an adventurous person, if you are adventurous, uh, you will be very happy to join this uh, field, the maritime industry, and get to travel uh, and meet lots of different people and go to different countries. Thank you. No, uh, Captain William. Uh, Maisa, you want to say something uh, just to add? Uh, yes, I can. I just Captain Tevita want to say. I'll, I'll, I'll. Captain Tay. Uh, thank you, uh, Rambir. Um, before I took up navigation, uh, I I studied here back in 1976 as a shipbuilder. Here at the maritime school, right? Eh? Uh, I served five years, qualified, and I work in the shipbuilding industry for the last uh, for twelve years before I joined the army. This was way back in eighty seven during the first coup. So I wanted to visit the world, so I need to join the army. So when I joined the army, and the Fiji military forces at that time sponsored me instead of going to Lebanon and Sinai. They sent me here to the maritime school to be trained as a ship's captain to serve on a Fiji military forces uh, auxiliary unit uh, uh, ships. So I came here. I graduated in uh, 1992, obtaining my diploma uh, nautical science program here, the certificate. And we had two vacancies in the school, two vacancies, a lecturer in shipbuilding and a lecturer in nautical science. In 1993, 
and I applied for the both position, and I was given both position. Uh, prior to 1993, there were two lecturers, and they have left for green uh, passes to join uh, one man overseas and uh, one retired. So I came in. Until today, I'm still teaching, and uh, the government starts sending me abroad to go and do to further my studies, and I've been joining ships. And one thing I've learned is. For me, I've been uh, mentioning to the students, it's best that I went through the army training group before I joined the Fiji, the Fiji Maritime Academy. One thing I learned is discipline. And to respect not only your superior, to respect, to respect your colleagues. This is what I've learned during my two months training at the army training group at Nassim. So when I joined a ship, my first opposite ship was a ship that has four nationalities on board. We have French officers, Polish officers, Filipino crew, and we had two Fijians that joined from here. We were serving the North America. This ship was serving North America. And what I've learned when I joined is because of we have this, uh, different uh, cultures, religions, and we need to adapt. We need to respect, you know? So this is what I've learned on my first ship. I need to respect others. As mentioned by Captain um, William, now we have uh, multinationals on board a ship, on one ship. So we, we will expect different cultures, different religions, you know? So we need to have respect. So that's what we've been encouraging students. When you join a ship, they own you, own you. In the past, yes, we do. We do have guest ship that has all Fijian crew. The captain and the chief engineer are for uh, uh, maybe for an Australian or other nationality, eh? but we have full national crew, Fijian crew. But now no more. Mixed crew. So I used to encourage you, you have to respect, learn, discipline yourself. Okay, when you join a ship, you need to respect others, their cultures and their religions. Thank you, Rabir. So you, you wanna say something or? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'll give a chance to Mr. Nawaki first, Master, Master Sunia, and then I'll, I'll, I'll speak to, uh, after that. You're muted, uh, Masters. Sorry. Yeah. I have been in the training field longer than I think any of my colleagues. I have uh, I taught in uh, FIT, I mean FIT days for 10 years and I left FIT and I joined USP. I was at USP for 18 years. This is with the same qualification that I obtained from FIT or the maritime school. And then uh, I went and studied and came back. And, and then in 2010, I came back here. Uh, and, uh, the positions that I used to look after in USP had been suspended. So I joined in 2010 till now. And uh, what my understanding is with the discipline is what I would like to remind uh, the intended students coming into the school, as I normally tell my, my children, I said, discipline starts from home. Okay, there's no way. I said, the, school, the teachers and the lecturers, they're not going to discipline you. If you cannot obey your parents at home, it's gonna be very difficult because you spend most of your life, your time with them anyway, irrespective whether you are fully awake or you are sick, whatever state you're in. If you have discipline that comes in, come with you from home, I can assure you, you go a long way, okay? The respect and everything that uh, Captain Te is uh, reminding us, it is true. Those things comes in naturally. Like Captain Te, I did military training. I'm, I'm a retired officer from the Navy itself anyway, but 
discipline is if it does if home does not if parents do not um, uh, bring you up the proper manner then it is very difficult for anyone in school in uh, the academy you know we we struggle to maintain this but uh, the best one we we I, I can look around and see my former students who are chief engineers all over the world and uh, the ones that went through easily and i mean who are currently in in fact one of my uh, former students is a director of one of the big uh, company in, uh, in in australia okay he was one of the top students he was smart and he was he was disciplined okay not only he was he became a chief engineer but he is also he's one of the directors of one of the uh, company that based in uh, melbourne but in my career path, I didn't serve too much time in the sea. But as soon as I uh, graduated, my first qualification, my first certificate, I, I was based in Auckland. I was based in New Zealand away immediately. I was about 22 years old or 23 years old then. You know, and to me, there was a, a big responsibility for that age. When I compare it with some of my students now, and I ask them, how old are you? And they tell me they haven't finished their diploma. And they tell me that they're 24 years old. I said, by then, I was already serving as a second engineer on large ocean going vessel. Okay, so you discipline yourself on the career path that you want to take and you make sure you follow commands that is given to you. You don't make yourself your own God. You listen to those that are trying to train you and develop you. That's my advice to them. There's no point in trying to get a whip and whip them and tell them to, because it will never change them. All you can do is remind them, this is how you do it. And I have seen, we've got a couple of our, my former students who are also chief engineer in uh, Papua New Guinea. And those, those would have been, like I can categorize them. You have uh, those ones that are on the top that have served as chief engineers on last, last uh, ocean going vessels. There are those ones that have gone to other countries or within the Pacific because of the money, not necessarily in that category of uh, the class that are serving in the foreign going vessels, larger ocean going ones. But um, I can tell which ones that had uh, held up well and had maintained that and ended up in the top of the range. And then you have the second, the middle ones. And then you have some that they, they're struggling, they're getting there, you know, they, uh, they managed to pay for their bread and butter you know, in the meantime, but there you will always find different categories of uh, success within the students that you that you brought up. And uh, to me, it is a pride. And I know that every now and then we will meet up with the oldest. I said, it wasn't for you. I said, no, it wasn't. It's not me. It's you. You're the one that made it, not me. Okay. I was only there to guide you. Okay. That's my, how I would, uh, I normally would advise my students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lavaki. Uh, CEO, maybe briefly, you can just touch yes, on uh, that. Yeah, very quickly. The, so from, from our, my heads of department, uh, everyone can see that they are from different backgrounds. They've done different things. Uh, so that is, uh, that is a message to give to you that you don't have to really stick to just going to see all your life. Uh, see, all of us uh, have done different things. Um, and, uh, I, I grew up in a small island uh, like Fiji and um, I ended up here in Fiji. Uh, so uh, you, you, um, you can't, you don't have to limit yourself to just being a ship's officer for the rest of your life. That's, that's my, uh, what I have to say. And um, we haven't touched on this, but I'm going to say that next. Uh, so we are only doing diploma at the moment. We are doing Diploma in Marine Engineering and Diploma in Nautical Science. But next year, we are going to offer uh, bachelors in Nautical Science. So that means um, our diploma students can, can have a degree. So when you have a degree, you, don't, you can diversify yourself. You can go into many parts of... Um, uh, it doesn't have to be uh, uh, in, the, in the shipping industry. You can be a, a, a director, CEO, manager, uh, Anywhere, any, any of, pick any of the industries with a, with a, with a degree, they, they'll accept you for your experience and your skills. So you don't have to limit yourself to a, 
uh, to being at sea for the rest of your life. Uh, and that's what uh, all of us at the academy, the, the academic staff, that, uh, that's what we've been doing. Uh, we have uh, done our sea time, we've done our academic work, now we, we are uh, doing a show-based job. So you can join MSAP, you can be a surveyor, you can be a pilot. So there are many things you can do other than, uh, uh, you. of course, you will get your, your ticket, your, your class one. Or, uh, when you get that and in your degree, then, then you're, the world is your oyster. You can do anything you like. Thank you, Rambir. Uh, thank you, uh, CEO uh, and team. Uh, thank you uh, to all the participants for attending our virtual interactive session. Uh, like I said earlier, um, you can visit the FNU website, www.fnu.ac.fj, or contact the FMA team on phone number 241779, or email also on eo fma at fnu.ac.fj. You can also send in your inquiries through our FNU Facebook page and uh, we will get those answered uh, promptly. Friends, uh, please be informed that we will be organizing a similar program called the Virtual Outreach Activity, which will be held in three weeks. We will be connecting with your school virtually and present to you study opportunities available at the Fiji National University. Also keep in mind that is announced by the Fijian government, the Fiji National University has 5,000 placements for students wishing to take up TVET courses. Details regarding or relating to these courses will be made available soon on the FNU website. Once again, thank you for attending our live session. As I had mentioned earlier, if you still have any questions, you can visit the FNU website and also continue to participate in our interactive chat sessions. I strongly encourage you all to enroll at the Fiji National University to broaden your skill sets and knowledge and at the same time attain the relevant qualifications. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all our sponsors for making the FNU 2021 virtual open week possible. Our sponsors are Fiji Sun, Vodafone, Fijian Broadcasting Corporation, Telecom Fiji Limited, the Reserve Bank of Fiji and Digicel. So from all of us here at the Fiji National University, thank you once again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again during the virtual outreach activity in the coming weeks.